Okay, let's talk about three critical math and algebra skills that you must know to pass algebra. Now, in algebra, you're going to learn a lot of different skills, and all of these uh, skills are important to pass. But I chose these three uh, uh, skills in particular because they're kind of common areas where students uh, struggle, and they're very, very important throughout the entire uh, course of study in algebra. Okay, And again, I think uh, these skill sets um, are skills that most students or many students uh, believe that they know better than they actually do. So we're going to talk about these three skills and kind of I'm going to give you some suggestions and recommendations on how to improve them. And interesting enough, these ones, uh, these skills all start with the letter F. So if you kind of want to have, um, you know, kind of a little guessing game with me, try to figure out what skills these are. If you want to play along, of course, I'm going to go through these one by one here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math uh, help programs there is. Uh, it's all video based. I have many, many uh, courses. Matter of fact, I have 100 plus different courses uh, ranging from Pre-Algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. I'm going to be launching a pre-calculus here shortly. By the way, if you're interested, you can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But um, I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, uh, ACT, GRE, uh, Alex exam, AccuPlace or CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, all those various exams and many, many others, um, I have full comprehensive test prep courses. So uh, if you are studying for one of those exams, just go to my website. Again, the link is in the description of this video. Check out my full course catalog. I should have what you're studying for. And if I do not, please um, drop me a line on my contact form and I'll help you out the best I can. Now, uh, I also do a lot of work with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program. Then obviously I help those of you that are just struggling in your current math courses. So uh, I could definitely help out, a, uh, well, I do help a lot, a wide range of uh, students. But if you're serious, truly serious about wanting to be better in math, then you got to do this. you got to take great math notes. So over decades of teaching math, it's just apparent to me that this is like the foundation of learning, or learning anything, okay? Those students who take great math notes are going to do very, very well, and the reverse is true. So, you know, these things that we're going to be talking about, if you're taking great notes, you're going to do very well, okay? So... Uh, yes, there is definitely an absolute correlation for note-taking. If you take great notes, you're going to do well. If you don't take great notes, like I did way back in the good old 1980s, and what was I doing in class? I was talking to my buddies, and uh, every time the teacher looked at me, I was writing some scribble scratch, just pretending I was taking notes, and then I would end up with, uh, you know, the grades like that and uh, <laughs> barely pass, of course, later uh, on when I went to college, etc., you know, I figured out the importance of note-taking, okay? You got to uh, take notes. It's all about focus and engagement, all right? There's, again, there's too many things you need to learn, not only in math, but in all your subjects. But as you're improving um, in your note-taking, I offer uh, detailed, comprehensive math notes you can study from to include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so three uh, critical algebra skill sets. They all start with F. I could have, um, you know, put more skills here, but these ones in particular, I think, are are, um, are really kind of essential. And, and well, they're all essential, but I'm talking about they come up quite frequently when students are struggling. Uh, assuming they are taking notes, these are the skills that um, typically give a lot of students uh, some uh, problems. So let's go through these one by one. And let's reveal our first word. It starts with the F. What is that? It's fractions, fractions, okay? So most students don't know fractions as well as they think. Now, of course, probably everyone can do this kind of work, right? Uh, Two-fifths plus one-third, they can get the answer. Or uh, let's see here, two-sevenths divided by one-fourth. You could do some basic, basic arithmetic. Hopefully you can. Even a lot of students kind of forget this because, you know, think about it. You're not using arithmetic all the time because we have our calculator. But uh, fractions are all over the place in algebra, okay, in terms, in, uh, terms of finding the LCD, etc. So you might be working with expressions like A plus B 
over C divided by, let me just write something right here. Let's see here, B minus C over A, okay? And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you gotta know what to do here. Now, what, you know, how am I gonna handle this? Well, uh, you're gonna handle this the same way you as we handle fractions with numbers. And that would include finding the LCD when we're adding and subtracting uh, fractions, and those are called rational expressions. So um, I find that a lot of students, they just, you know, aren't, aren't as strong in fractions and they don't do anything about it because most people don't like fractions. You know, when they look at fraction problems, they're just like, mm, they're like, you know, you know, just, mm, you know, fractions. I hate fractions. Just give me some nice numbers like two, three, seven, you know, plus, minus, you know, it doesn't work that way. Fractions are all over the place in mathematics and you just got to you know, learn to make friends with them. So fractions is an area you want to kind of, you know, ask yourself, do you know fractions as well as you think? Now, if you are struggling in basic arithmetic, um, typically you know, the operations that we deal with in fractions are what? Well, there's adding and subtracting, and then there's multiplication and division. So uh, I've done many videos on fractions. Just check out uh, my uh, pre-algebra playlist on my YouTube channel. But uh, remember, adding and subtracting, this, this involves finding the lowest common denominator if the denominators are not the same. And then multiplication and division, this is very easy. We just multiply across the respective numerators and denominators. And division problems, we turn into multiplication problems. So I don't want to turn this into a complete full lesson on these uh, particular skill sets, but you're going, you're going to need to know them. All right, so it's just a quick review. Um, so... Don't feel bad, like, you know, well, I was studying fractions back in the fifth and fourth grade. You know, I should know this stuff by now. Well, you'll be surprised, all right? Um, you know, most people, they'll go to the calculator, and we just don't, you know, uh, do as much uh, arithmetic uh, these days. And I think to the detriment of a lot of students, and it's just the way this, you know, a lot of curriculum and courses are built up. You know, we, we do want to use technology like calculators, et cetera. But when I went to elementary schools, way back elementary school, way back in the 1970s, um, and that was pretty crazy because I even remember I've said this in uh, my other videos uh, that my first grade teacher uh, she was smoking in the classroom, so that was kind of like old school. We used to have these gigantic big pencils like this, you know, and we'd have like these big pieces of paper and you know, like you know, big dotted lines. And so some of you out there that are, you know, in your 50s, uh, maybe late 40s or beyond couldn't relate to me. I think they were like blue pencils. We used to have even tricycles when we used to go on recess and stuff. We do all kinds of crazy stuff. But anyways, we did a lot of hand arithmetic. Okay, there was no calculators. We were just doing a ton of fractions and adding, subtracting decimals. So we were pretty good at, at it because that's, you know, uh, we didn't use a calculator. We didn't really have a calculator back in those days. Although uh, hand calculators did exist, but they weren't really in the school system. So um, it's not entirely your fault if you're not, you know, 100% up to speed on fractions, but you, it's your responsibility. So um, review fractions, again, uh, a couple of recommendations. One, uh, I have a ton of videos uh, in my pre-algebra playlist on my YouTube channel, or you might want to consider just taking my pre-algebra course where I teach fractions thoroughly along with a lot of other stuff. Okay, so what is the second F? The second F, now again, there's a ton of different um, skill sets out there, but I'm gonna put here formulas, formulas. Now, what am I talking about? Well, here's what I'm talking about. Most students can get, well, in algebra, will get pretty good at solving equations, something like that, like a linear equation, or even something a little fancier, let's say something like this. They'll be like, okay, I know what to do uh, here. I can I can handle these equations because you're solving for one variable. No, no problem. But what about if I said y equals mx plus b solve for m? Okay, so this is uh, an equation of a line, all right, and we call this uh, slope-intercept form. Equation, it says y equals mx plus b. This is probably pretty familiar. Uh, to a lot of you out there, but if I said solve for m, okay, write this formula in terms of m, and we have to do a lot of that in algebra when we're substituting and working with formulas. There's a ton of formulas, and we need to solve for a specific variable uh, when there's other variables in this equation. So here, if you look, we only have x to deal with, and most people are like, okay, I, got, I know what to do here. 
uh, well, some of you may not, you know, be comfortable with even solving equations, but when you, uh, students are comfortable solving equations and then they kind of think that this will translate easy over here, I have um, found that a lot of students uh, just don't, they're not as good as uh, solving for a particular variable when there's multiple variables in a, uh, a formula or an equation, okay? But this is a critical skill set. Again, um, I have uh, videos on this in my algebra playlist, solving for a particular uh, variable, this solving for the specified variable, et cetera. So the way this works, real quick, so let's say we have um, this basic uh, formula, physics formula. Uh, by the way, if you um, have the chance, take that course, physics, it's an awesome course. All right, of course, there's a ton of math in it, but it's just such a cool course. Anyways, I don't want to digress too much, but this is a physics formula. Force equals mass times acceleration. So it's uh, right now we have this formula written in terms of F. If I want to write it in terms of M, okay, how do I do that? Well, I'm going to treat A and F conceptually as numbers. So let's just uh, make pretend we have some numbers here uh, in this place. So let's just think of... Uh, that F like a 10 here momentarily, and we're solving for M. Let's think of that A as like a 2. So that's 10 equals M times 2, or we could write that as 10 is equal to 2 times M. So to solve for M, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. Okay, so that's what M is equal to, but in this case, uh, if you look, the A is like at the 2, and the F is like the 10. So to solve for M, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by a, so m is equal to f over a. Okay, that's the equivalent formula, or we took this formula and we wrote it in this way. So you got to uh, know how to do this. this. is very, very critical um, in a lot of different um, algebra uh, uh, main topics and chapters, like systems, solving that using the substitution method. Um, a lot of students struggle with the substitution method, if you know what I'm talking about, because they don't know how to solve for a particular variable or their making little tiny errors, and then this just keeps it cascading into other chapters in algebra. So formula, this uh, formulas are solving for a particular variable, uh, just like as I showed you here, is another uh, area of weakness. Again, I have a ton of videos on this in my YouTube channel, in my algebra playlist. Again, yeah, if you want to really, really learn this stuff, you might want to consider signing up for my algebra course. Okay, so we are talking about algebra. What do you think that last F is? Uh, now, there's a lot of good candidates out there. Some of you might say, is it functions? Uh, no, it's not functions. Although functions are it's a huge and important topic, maybe that would be a runner-up. And functions, I always love that word because the root word there is fun. But no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm going to put in here factoring. Factoring, this gets uh, so many students. I'm talking about, can you factor something like this? Okay, a trinomial. Uh, or could you factor something like this, difference of two squares? Or maybe something, well, that's terrible writing, uh, something like this, okay? Uh, greatest common factor, right? Or so, okay, that's going to be 4x, x plus 2, etc. So, and there's other, uh, various other factoring techniques I didn't even hit on, but factoring is one of these areas that so many students uh, don't know as well as they think, and factoring is absolutely everywhere throughout algebra. You must master factoring. Uh, but again, you know, if you're not taking notes, you're not paying attention, you're not working hard, doing your work, you're going to struggle. Okay, so what ends up happening, uh, unfortunately for a lot of students, they're already kind of shaky on fractions. Now, they're still confused about dealing with formulas. They have weak factoring skills, and that's why you know, a lot of uh, students just, you know, struggle. And, and there's no need to struggle in algebra if you do, you're doing your part, okay? And you got to do your part. So what's your part? Well, your part is to pay attention. You got to take notes. You got to be, like, paying attention to the teacher, right? You, this stuff is just not going to, like, like go into your brain, like, oh, you know, let me just download it. You know, I know we live in the uh, technology world, can I just download, hit the button, and be like, you know, go into my brain right here? Well, we're not there yet. Maybe in another 50 years, 20 years, 75 years, who knows? I don't know. Maybe they even have that ability now. But uh, the way we want to download information into our brains is we want to use 
um, various kind of learning, uh, uh, your learning aptitudes, okay, your, the, your learning styles. Oh, how do we learn? Well, we learn with our ears, okay? That's one way, all right? You want to you want to use all these mechanisms. We learn with our eyes, but really seeing and listening, that accounts for a small percentage of your retention, your long-term retention. Uh, the best way, okay, you, you, and you do need to be listening, you need to be uh, 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 seeing, obviously, what's going on, but is kind of like kinesthetic uh, learning, basically writing things down, okay? So as you're writing, this is helping you with your long-term retention. That's why I'm a big stickler if you're, you know, um, uh, been following me uh, for a while with my videos, you know I harp on note-taking because, uh, you know, you could watch me do a problem, but if you forget it, what good, you know, it's not going to do you any good, right? During a homework, test, or quiz, okay, the key is you have to remember this stuff. So you're going to have to practice, you're going to have to work hard, and you're going to have to find a teacher that you like and understand. So hopefully, you know, your teacher, um, uh, you know, hopefully uh, you like them, but if they're not, you know, if you're not, you know, crazy about your teacher, work with them, you know, ask questions and whatnot, but go seek out additional help, okay? If you like my teaching style, well, then uh, I have a ton of videos there on my channel, over a thousand plus uh, videos on my YouTube channel, because I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. My um, mission is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my uh, teaching style, then let me help you out. Watch all my videos, they're there uh, for you. My best math help will be within my courses and my math help program. But um, again, you know, do something about your situation. If you are serious about learning math, if you're not, well, then, you know, uh, do what a lot of students do. You know, some days they're, they work hard, other days they don't. Some days they work hard, some days they don't. And then typically at the very end of the course, students try to cram and make up for all this, uh, you know, ineffective or inconsistent work. Guess what? It doesn't work. All right. Maybe at most you might end up with a C. So it's up to you. But um, again, you know, uh, my goal is to help you out, tell you the truth about learning math. Okay. All right. So there are no shortcuts, uh, but you can do it and just uh, work at this one day at a time. So if this little video was informative in some way, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And again, uh, please consider uh, subscribing to my channel. Uh, I am making new content all the time, basic to advanced mathematics. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.